So you have a shirt that says pro-life. Uh, what are you out here uh, advocating for? Are you part of the march here? Or? No, no, we're not, we come out here every Saturday. And uh, so this is just another Saturday. There happens to be this march that says, don't kill children. But we're trying to say, don't kill children. Right. Now today, 300, 300, uh, 3,500 to 4,000 children will end up like that little girl down at the end of the end of this banner. And we think that's wrong. You shouldn't kill people. But we had a presidential candidate in the last election that absolutely advocated it. For uh, Planned Parenthood? Well, a advocated for more abortion. Right. All the way through nine months. And that the government, you, the taxpayer, you, the taxpayer, me, the taxpayer, should pay for it. Tax victim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> what, I, what we're doing, I would call it uh, an abortion education awareness program. We're really not protesting anything other than the existence of abortion. And what we're trying to do is educate people on what abortion is and what it looks like, what, what the children look like after they've been aborted, like that little girl down there. Okay, I right. don't actually know if it's a girl or a boy, but... You said mob lynchings, you have uh, the right, right. <clears throat> So you said like, so this is interesting uh, piece that you have here, because you have a lot of people here who are advocating for gun control, yep. right? As if they're yep. saying that they're pro-life, like they're here to, to save children's life, but yeah. incidentally a lot of them will be also for abortions, yes. right? Yes. Uh, they have their Planned Parenthood uh, stickers on yes. them. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure, but has Trump uh, funded anything for Planned Parenthood uh, this past year or not? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how all that works. The, yeah. the Congress has. Congress the, has. The right. Republican Congress has. Right. And, and of course, the Democrats <laughs> went along with it. Uh, what do you think of that? They, they, they fund about $500 million every year to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is going to use $20 million in the, for this election in, in November to have Democrat Democratic candidates win. So if you're a conservative, you pay taxes, you're paying taxes to, that will go to Planned Parenthood, will then advocate for representatives that are against what you stand for. A lot of it kind of goes towards abortion, so it's not well, really like it's going well, towards uh, Planned Parenthood planning for they, Parenthood They would itself. tell you, Planned Parenthood would tell you, that it does not go. But how do you not co-mingle funds? And for all the money that goes into the non-abortion part of Planned Parenthood, that means the money that Planned Parenthood has raised otherwise doesn't ha can be used for abortions. Right. So you know it's this funny little trick of commingling without commingling. Right. So yeah, they kill uh, Planned Parenthood according to their annual reports does at least 320,000 abortions every year. So they do 900,000 abortions. Well, three, yeah, 320,000 a year. So right. about uh, nine. Nine. So, what's it? I, I forget the numbers, so I won't give them to you. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I got the pamphlet. Now, and being pro-life, right, you're not just against uh, murdering children, right, the unborn. Uh, you're also against uh, what government does to its own people, right? You have a picture here of uh, the Jewish. You have lynchings going on here. Uh, government uh, sanctified slavery here in the United States, right? Government sanctified the slaughter of the Jews. Right. The, the German government. Our government... But sanctified, that's the wrong word. Uh, sanctioned. Sanctioned. Um, our government passed the Tom Crow laws. Right. What's Jim, it? Crow. Jim Crow. Right. That's his brother. Right. Uh, that allowed this to happen while lynchings, I, I think lynchings per se were not actually legal. Maybe they were. But there was no government authorities that would do anything about it. Like the Rosa Parks things. That wasn't <laughs> business creating a law saying that she couldn't sit there. It was a government law. I uh, said that. Probably, right. probably. Yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, uh, So don't you think then, uh, if we see government also contributing towards mass murder and not being very pro-life, that then the position you take then universally to be pro-life is to also be anti-government? No, no. It's to be anti-laws that allow government. Government is necessary. No matter what you do, you're going to have a government. If you belong to a church, the church has a government. If you belong to a club, the club has a government, some kind of a governing you board. You say an organization, right? right. I wouldn't call that, you know, the Boy Scouts is not a government. I call that an organization, you know. Uh, well, but still, they have, have, they have a government. Um, so we, we always will form a government. The anarchy will never succeed. Once anarchy tear, tells, tears the existing government down, they'll create their own generally a totalitarian government.
kind of like, kind of what you could say we have today. You have most of the people in uh, prisons for victimless crimes. You have well, drone bombing uh, children overseas in the thousands. Uh, 200 military bases has become the very tyranny that uh, you know that the founders uh, sought to be against. Yeah, but eliminating government will not eliminate that. That's just going to change where the tyranny, as you put it, occurs. Well, I guess only if we continue to place our hands in government, it continues to repeat itself. Governments don't last forever. They collapse, well, and then you have civil war, or you have a uh, revolution. Violence, right, right, revolution. And what does revolution do? How many people died in Russia after 1917? Because they're trying to create another government. How many people died in Russia after 1917? After uh, 1917, you have uh, their attempt to instill Marxist uh, dream come true, and you have a lot of famine going on. Yeah, same thing. So in, the uh, answer is uh, in the millions, tens of millions. Same thing in Mao's China. What, that's what you got with anarchy that then formed its own government. You will always have a government. This government, for its failures, is still the best government that there is. Until it fails. Until you have four sheriff's deputies in that high school that refused to encounter the killer and hid like cowards. And then they were not I very said, much said, protecting said, the sanctity of pro-life. With its failures. I think the whole thing is a failure from the very beginning. What we're, we're, we're talking about earlier, like we're taxpayers, you're saying, well, but right? What, what whole thing is a failure? Government in itself, all of it. So what would you do? I would say look to the market to providing these services, right? So, you have a real obligation, contractual to, to relationship. Take, to take law and order out, take police out? Yeah, take police out. Take laws out? We can have laws. I just well, don't where want, are the laws going to come from? Well, laws are just rules, rules well, that we well, can well, agree to, right? Where do the laws, rules, whatever you want to call them, yeah. where do they come from? Uh, some people may say they come from God. God says don't murder, right? Okay. What is taxation but theft? Okay. Right? Uh, what is uh, organized war but murder? Well, right? you know, once again... Where, where does their nature of uh, morality come from? Well, that's, that's a good question because all laws... Here's a sweeping statement. You ready for this one? All laws are morally based. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, what morals are we using? We could say natural right. Well, what's natural right? We can say natural right survived from uh, this is my body. I have uh, the right to uh, defend myself from those who seek to initiate aggression against my body. And do they have the right to initiate aggression? Of course not. Why not? Where, uh, where does that law come from? Well, it's, uh, if, if they if think, it's a Western tradition here and the creation of capitalism, of property so, rights. So a tradition. What you're saying is yeah, the law is a tradition, norms. but it's not. Yeah. But so the mor morality ought to be based on tradition. Yeah, but it could be based on uh, whatever culture these people have these norms from. You have the Amish, for example. The only law that they have is uh, if you break the rules, social ostracism. Break what rules? Uh, the rules that they have so in the Amish So you always have to ask that question when you throw out the word rules. Yeah, they have where, rules. So you have rules in your house. Where do not, they come don't from? write on my wall. Do you have children, right? You have to rules in your house, right? Don't come home after midnight, right? Uh, wash your hands before you eat. Those are rules, right? And you created those rules. Did you need government to create those rules? Nope. No, we don't need some somebody who's never we've never met to dictate us how to live our own have lives. Have you ever right? met a president? And have you? You can't ask me my question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Without answering it first. Of course not. Well, neither have I. Okay. So do I have to have met whoever the lawmaker is? You don't have to. Exactly. Right. Now, so I, but now, these are strangers. Well, wait, let me ask you a question. You asked me a question. Okay. Now, do you have to obey whatever opinion they write on a piece of paper, strangers you've never met, and they say this is the law, if you never give consent to that rule? Well, now how do we give consent to the rules? Well, you have uh, an agreement, contracts. And, and what's the contract? Uh, do you we have, have to have a contract with yeah. every individual in the country? Not necessarily. Can you have contracts in uh, 55 and older communities? Only 55 and older can live here. You have their homeowners association, and those are the rules that kind of govern that but, community. So all the people who go into that community yeah. agree to abide by those rules, yes. whether they made them or not. Actually, whether even they, if they agree with them all no, or no, not. No, no, no. Before they move in there, you have, well, you're, they have you're, a choice you're, you of have not choice. moving in yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, but once they move in there, they have a, a, a contract with their explicit signature and consent. Then it applies. So, what should the penalty be for those people if they disobey the laws? Well, it, it's outstated in that contract. Well, what should, it may, what might be a fifty dollars fine. It could be, uh, you know, a warning. How it about, depends. How about uh, being kicked out of the community? That's also a rule. Yeah. Now we so got private. Have that. We got private property. How does that happen? They have ownership. Yeah. Can you kick them off their property? Well, you know, if uh, if I have a rule in my house saying no uh, smoking, you know, doing crack cocaine, if I'm renting it out and someone's doing it, yeah, I'm kicking them out. They don't own it. They don't own the it's property. Not my pro that's just, yeah, it's my property. You're the, yeah, still your property. Yeah. So you still get to make the rules. They don't get to make the well, rules. Well, they, they agreed to the rules before they moved in. Here's the contract, right? No illicit drug use. And so when they say, you say, get out of my house, and yeah. they say, no, I don't think so. Well, then you're violating what? the contract. Then but I f physically remove them. How do you do that? 
uh, by physically remove them. I suppose they're bigger and stronger than you. Then I hire their security companies that will take care of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, every, every uh, what, what is it? Um, everybody does what's right in his own eyes, then. It's kind of what you're saying. Well, this everybody is Everybody makes their own laws. Everybody does what's right in his eyes. Yeah. They have good rules. Respect for property rights well, is great. Wait, wait, this wait, is not wait, an organization wait, wait, wait. that respects property what, rights. What, what is good rules? Good rules would be Where those that... The, what is good? How do you know what is good? I would say good is uh, things that uh, advocate for um, the respect for other people's property rights. Well, I don't know if that's good. Yeah. And your achievement, whatever you want to follow, go for it. As long as it doesn't violate the property rights of other people. As long as I don't violate your own body ship ownership or your property rights of your claim to your house, to your car, and things that you own. How can anything else but that be not, not good? Everything else that violates that, violates their consent, just, will be considered bad, right? Well, how did you come by your property? Did you come by it legitimately or illegitimately? By trading the title ownership of my money for the title ownership of oh, that so shirt. What I was asking car. you is how did you come by your money? By trade. Well, I work. Did you exploit anybody in the process? But to define exploitation. Ah, there you are. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you would say, no, I never exploited anybody. Of course, yeah. But those that were believe they were exploited by you would say, oh, yes, he did. Well, then uh, let's go to court and prove your court. case. Now, court. Yeah. That's an interesting that idea. That is an interesting idea. Where does that concept come from? Well, it's just, what, is, uh, what is a court? Well, it's a court. It's just a person that provides an opinion on uh, arbitrary and re resolving conflicts of dispute. That's but, it. But if, if this he... robot, black, black robe does not imbue him with magical powers more, more different than anyone else. It does. It gives you. It gives him the right to say what you must do. It says that uh, he he can have. Um, if he says that, he says that if you go against my own best interest, I have, I'm forced to go to his to his court. I can't go to any other court. I can't choose a court that says, "Hey, I don't work for the government. The prosecutor doesn't work for the government. The cop doesn't work for the government. This entire system of law works for the government." You can't say that's impartial. I can't say what's impartial. That the government court system is impartial. To, the, to, my, to my interests, when everybody works for the same side. If I go for, uh, if I'm seeking dispute, you find dispute everywhere. If, if I find a- If you're what? Dispute, if I'm looking- Oh, oh for, dispute. Yeah, if I'm trying to resolve a dispute, you, you go to eBay, you go to uh, PayPal, there's a lot of places. If someone charges your credit card, right, unauthorized, they resolve that dispute very quickly, right? You don't have to go for the police, well, they'll do nothing, right? Probably, because there's so much of it. There's so much of it. Now, here's an interesting thing. Many Supreme Court rulings, Warren versus District of Columbia, DeShaney versus Winnebago County, have decreed many times over and over again that the police, the government, have no obligation to protect their life, liberty, and property. It does not exist. So you're being a, a tax victim, forced to give the surrender money to them for a service which... Well, as you no, said before, you don't, don't have, have to pay protect. taxes. That's a choice. Well, it's not so much of a choice. If, if it is a choice, they wouldn't threaten to send you to jail if you don't well, pay it, but right? That's, that's just them saying it. You still don't have to pay them. You just have to be willing to take the consequence. Being murdered, yeah. Well, uh, murder's a little strong. Well, you know, if I, if I resist and try to escape, what happens? Oh, well. Murdered. <laughs> well, maybe. Except it won't be ruled that way. Yeah, of course. Because, so, so just say I'm, I was resisting uh, not giving them their money. No more different if a mugger came in an alley and demanded money off. from me. Yeah. If you pulled out a, let's say, an AK-47, or, or it's an A4, AR-47, what are we all, all hot about today? Right. Uh, I forget. AR-15. Oh, AR-15. Yeah. Okay. Armalite. Wasn't it AK-47? Isn't that what the communists used in, in Vietnam? It's a popular one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's a great argument. I wish I'd remember. <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm saying is that uh, I do want rules. So I do want security. I do want these things, but government has monopolized them in a way that I'm forced to pay for it, and I can't compete entrepreneurially in order to say I can provide a service of security that will have an obligation to protect you, that would not hide like cowards like the sheriffs in which you're forced to pay for them, right? We can have rules, but rules you give explicit consent to, not one of a but, contract that doesn't exist with you in government. But what you end up with is great variance in the rules. They'll kind of overlap. It'll be a polycentric legal system. Yeah. You know, businesses want to go to efficient means, right? M times money. You know, they, they come around uh, shared rules. Insurance company does it all, do it all the time in terms of their customers uh, colliding with one another. And then they have uh, fundamental precept agreements and how to proceed in the well, next time okay, this kind of thing Let's occur. go back to this. We have some people that think that's a good thing. Government, just like you explained no, no, earlier. No, no, no. Yeah. People in the society. 63 million people voted for more of that in the last election. Should they, are they right? Who did they, who, who voted for what? For lynching? No, no. 60, that's, we now, yeah, so you're we, for. I mean, what's that, what, I, I pointed further than that, uh, but what's our view now of lynching? 
Uh, yeah, uh, the what, moral do, argument against uh, slavery has uh, succeeded to the same. People don't generally walk around advocating for slavery anymore. That's a we, great we, thing. We har we're horrified. We're reviled yeah. by lynchings. But at the time, that was not the case. It well, wasn't really as common. Wasn't uh, as common as what? As the advocation for lynching or this sort of. Uh, That's what I'm talking about is lynching. How can you say it wasn't as common as lynching? How can you say lynching wasn't as common as lynching? It's not as in terms like everyone was advocating for lynching. People minding their own business. You had business that didn't care about the color of your skin, yeah. but the color of your money. And, and they didn't care what happened to the people who were being lynched. Well, it's, uh, it's well, some that people care. Some it people cared. I know that. Yeah. But you just said there's some people that don't. So if there's a bunch of people that don't, should yeah. we be able to let lynching exist for the for the few that do? So you think that? Uh, I, no, I'm, 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 I'm asking your question. <laughs> so this there's a place, a community that allows lynching. Do you think black people will move into that sorts of community? That to be, be lynched? They could. I don't know that they'd move in to be lynched. Right. Yeah. So here's a community that has a rule that says lynching is permissible. I think that's a really failed business idea. I think whoever was the CEO of that, you know, will lose his position, get fired. So, so we should, I think the market does a good job in bankrupting horrible ideas. But suppose it succeeds and more people, more non-black people move to that community because they don't want to be associated with blacks. But and then, then, and then black, the, 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 the people want to be racist. We know where they are. Wait, I don't. Wait, wait. It could be a market. When, uh, social when you use the word racist, you're yeah. being very subjective. Well, in terms of you're expressing well, no, an opinion. I define it as a hatred for another person for their skin that's color. A, that's an opinion. Well, that's how I define it. It's a good general definition for it. Instead of very vague, which a lot of people say anything you say or do is uh, of disliking, discomfort is racism. I think a good proper definition of that would be a hatred towards another person for their skin color, right? Or or because of their size. Well, then because say, of their location. They could say. Uh, is that racist? I mean, racist isn't really say the right word. Tallest, ageist. Sure. Yeah, yeah, ageist. That's ageism. That's that's against ageism. Well, you know, the if people the if people you, in Florida who have 55 and older communities are ageist against people who are 54 and younger. Don't you think? That's perfectly fine. Yeah. I think these preferences are fine. I'm not. I'm not so against should, this kind of preferences. Okay. Yeah. So why should we be against lynching if there's people that are for it? Uh, because it advocates for the initiation of uh, of but violence. The, but there's a bunch of. No, there's. Yeah, a, I'm against it wherever it is, whether it's here in, in D.C., whether it's in Alabama, whether it's across the world. See, I 80 or wrong. 90 years ago, 100 years ago, you would have been for it. No, why, why would I be for it? There's because, people 100 years ago who were against such things. Because that a guy was, named Lysander Spooner. A lot, a lot of anti slavery, a lot of anti this stuff that's been around. That's just because Because, because that was the cultural it. norm. I don't know if it was so much the cultural norm. Just, most people just didn't I'm really care you, for it. i it was the cultural norm. That's what the Jim Crow's law were. Jim Crow laws were, was the cultural norm. Jim Crow's laws are a minority of people. Government is run by a minority of people. I don't think a minority of people dictate the cultural norms of the vast majority of people who just want to live their life and do their own thing. It wasn't a bus company that told Rosa Parks, these are our rules, so you must sit in the back. It was a government law that said that. Marriage Act did not come into place only because the government wanted to prevent interracial marriages. Well, that wasn't a do you think that thing. the government should protect babies in the womb? Or should that be the individual's decision? I think that should be, uh, you can have market decision. Uh, things like what you're doing, right? Trying to help people learn this kind of situations instead of pointing a gun at them to the government and telling them, no, you have to understand that we're pro-life by using the gun of the government to teach them. That will be because kind we'll of hypocritical. Kill you if you don't. Right, yeah, and that's not very pro-life. <laughs> yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. No. Um, so should there be laws against abortion? Should the baby in the womb be protected like the child outside of the womb? That's a good question. I That's, think, uh, I think a it's lot a very people, good one. Yeah, a lot of people uh, value that, and in those communities, it would be like that. Yeah. Shucks. Just a minute. You have a heckler? No. Yeah, phone. Uh, so one point I want to make. So we were in the... So, I'm going to wrap Thank this up uh, to, to, back to the point well, real quickly. You, you said we were tax victims, right? I didn't and, say we were tax victims. Well, you said I tax said payers. payers. Right, right, you're payers, right. Now, the thing See, is... I elect to pay taxes. You elect, right, but you have no choice, because if you don't, you go to jail. So you don't really have okay. a, an elective choice. Now, the thing is, don't you think, then, the very nature of taxes is not pro-life, then, when your life will be threatened to be thrown to a cage, and if you resist and can try to run away, your life will be threatened again? Uh... I'm not ready to tie the. It's the universal. Pro you have to be pro-life. You can't well, make yeah, exceptions. Well, I am pro-life. Well, be pro-life universally without exceptions. Can you make the? Can you agree with the claim then? 
that taxation threatens that. It is not a pro-life position. It's an anti-life No, I, I disagree with your premise. What part of uh, not paying your taxes is pro-life? I don't see the government. The, the government is something we, the people, requested to exist. I did not request it. Anybody like a pamphlet? Well, she did not request um, about, it. There's no factual evidence to support that claim. Uh, well. Okay. Uh, yeah. You skip over all the history for the last 200 well, you years, know, and you're no, right. There's no contractual relationship with government. Okay. You didn't sign the Constitution. So, Your name is not on that. Are you, do you think the baby in the womb should be protected yeah. from the, from willful destruction? I think so. And how would you protect the baby in the womb from willful uh, destruction? I would uh, go out and seek the woman and say, hey, let's provide all their choice, choices. You know, what, what, what situation have you been put in this position? Let's find a way. Maybe there's people who will so want such a baby. do you do that? Yeah. I, I go out there and I, I say that. Go out you know, where? Uh, some talk to my friends sometimes. Well, if they're yeah, not, I'm not saying that they're actively seeking abortion, but I'm just voicing my opinion. Uh, such a so, that this is such a dire Do you live situation. here in D.C.? I've lived here for 15 years. I'm in Richmond right now. Okay, so yeah. you live in Richmond. Yeah. Okay, there's a, there's abortatoriums in Richmond. Yeah. Do you go to those abortatoriums to tell the women who are about to go in and have their babies slaughtered? That they shouldn't. There's alternatives. That's an interesting uh, conversation. I mean, but if you if you believe that, you said you believe that. Uh, would you want to join me in having this conversation in Richmond? Oh, you believe I, in that too, right? This is not just talking. Yeah. Come out here every Saturday, right? I don't have to travel for you don't Richmond. Have to travel. Oh, you come meet me in Richmond. We'll do it together. Okay. Yeah. Look up CBR Virginia. No, I'd like to do this with you. Afterwards, we'll grab a beer and we'll go out there and see if I can talk to some of these, you, some of these people. Would you not do it if I'm not there? Or is your action dependent on what I do? Well, or when can I say you that do you it? All, well, sure, but you're saying you seem to be more knowledgeable about this and the oh, statistics probably. facts, right? Yeah. So I think I've, there's a lot of interesting things I could kind of learn from that, okay. right? So let me tell you yeah. how you can do that. If you're actually interested, I'll tell you anyway, yeah, but, yeah. but you don't have to actually be interested. You just have to look like it. So you can contact a group in Richmond called CBR Virginia, and they do these same things in Richmond. And they can tell you where the abortatoriums are, and they can go out and do this, and you can go with them. Sure. Um, CBR, as in Center for Bioethical Reform, Virginia. Just Google it. Yeah. And you can get in contact with uh, Fletcher Armstrong or Maggie Egger, and, and they'll set you all up. And Sounds you can good. go out with them. I'll follow through with that. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you consider then, at least consider, right, be open, that taxation is not necessarily pro-life? Because it must th it threatens the life of the individual if they don't there are, surrender there the property. Are, there are many aspects of the tax system that uh, advocates for abortion. Right. But the thing is, you have no choice. I The understand. government says, give us your property, surrender it. If you don't, we'll send cops after you. They did it to Wesley Snipes, who went to jail for three years. And if you try to run away or escape, we will shoot you, murder you, take away your life. Will you consider then that that will not be a pro-life position to support taxation? What, what I said was there are many aspects of the taxation laws, or the way taxes are used, which are anti-pro-life. Taxes necessarily must first be threaten your life before must, they can be used for anything else. Must government, be what? Government must threaten your life. Uh, threaten? Take, threaten, that, yeah. <laughs> threaten your life before they could do anything else with the money, before they could say, we're gonna spend it for this, this, and that. They must first threaten you, your to life. Get the, to take the right, money. To get the yep. money, right? Yep. And who was, it, who was it that, what, uh, who was it that put the tax system in place? You have uh, some people like Milton Freedom who did the uh, withholding tax, Back horrible up. withholding who? tax. Milton Freedom? No. He did uh, no. withholding tax. There's a well, lot of other people. Maybe withholding, but who yeah. established the income tax for who this was, country? Who established that? When was it established and how was it established? Uh, I'm not sure, FDR? <laughs> back up, back up. <laughs> uh, by Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. 1913, passed an amendment to the Constitution that said the government had the authority to tax. Now, you know, you have to know how amendments are passed. It's very difficult to get an amendment passed by design. And uh, Woodrow Wilson was a Democrat, of course. Uh, and he was really a kind of a totalitarian guy, if you ever learn much yeah. about him. So was uh, FDR. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Same birds Send and feathers. Send people to concentration camps in California just for being Asians. Well, not for being Asians, for being Japanese. Yeah, they but were, you had more well, people. Sometimes that, you couldn't tell. You, you didn't have just Japanese people in there. Right. Yeah. Because somebody will say, oh, well, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Right. Well, yeah. how about the Chinese? Well, they yeah. look Japanese. Yes, that was, that was another blot, another failure on our history. <clears throat> um, so yes, absolutely true. So what do you say then? 
Aside from tax, all taxation though works the same principle though. Income, property mm -hmm. tax, mm -hmm. anything. When you die, half your income. Well, Maybe. Okay, yeah. I mean, this is one of the things that Trump wants to reform is to get the death tax removed. Right. Death Although taxes, that'll happen is taxes. another thing. Death huh? is uh, <coughs> threatened. Threatens taxes threaten your by, you by death. Could be. Yeah. Um, so I'll follow through with what you said. I'll meet with. What's the, the group? I said C R P. What's the group? <laughs> it doesn't know. Recorded. It's recording. We'll look over afterwards. Thank you. Um, Center for Bioethical Reform. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. I'll, we'll, I'll follow Virginia. up with that. Now, Center would you consider, and I'll Virginia. do that, but I'll follow up with you afterwards. But I want to see if, if you have come to, you know, maybe a good universal a realization that it's all, you have, you have no realization, but you have all these different instances where government was very much against We're life failed. and taxation for its very foundation right. is against life. Yep. The government has failed many times. If you want to be pro-life, you have to be anti-government. I don't and you're not pro-life. You're not pro-life. Okay. Yeah. You're not pro-life. You're, you're, you're pro-choice. You have choices in an area where you should you're have life. You welcome to make that judgment, no, but I think you're incorrect. I'm saying you're pro-choice then. You have choices in an area where you, you should have, have life. a lot of choices. And a lot of choices for an area where government should take your life. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can earn that. All right. <laughs> well, it was a fun conversation there. Yeah. So enjoy. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for taking the time. Of course.